welcome back here to the S uh, SPL 2016 as... Uh, okay, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm Taysel, okay. Taysel had to do a quick uh, little uh, pee pee there and I'll... Uh, Everybody like pees, guys. Yeah. Uh, that was a shorter break than I realized. Okay, so we're here. What are we talking about? This is game number three. <laughs> uh, it's going to be Zest against Deer at PvP. Mm -hmm. And uh, both these players really strong. Uh, Zest, one of the strongest uh, Protosses in Heart Swarm. Uh, but as we see with that down arrow, he hasn't been doing that well in Legacy of Void so far. But he still is a solid player. Um, but I, in my opinion, I vote for Deer. I know who you vote for in this matchup, but I think Deer will win this. I think Deer. I think Deer will take yeah, it. Yeah. Um, um, I think Deer is looking really solid uh, in PvP lately. But uh, this this was actually a very tough one to call. Mm. Um, I mean, Zest could totally win this. Yeah. No like Zest is one of those players that. On any given Sunday, he can win uh, any pro league game. Yeah, man. So Even can't... any given Monday. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, you know, for pro league, you know, you can do that as well. Um, let's let's see what happens. I mean, you know, there there is a difficulty, by the way, in predicting a uh, one match. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're, ba I mean you're basically just uh, throwing a coin up and fi figuring out who's going to win. I mean, I'm trying to figure out which side of the coin yeah. is a little bit heavier. I yeah. mean. <laughs> It, it, it's tough because uh, you you could do some crazy stuff in in one game, and you know you might be way better than somebody. But if you have the right strategy plan on the right map, and you've you've got enough data on your opponent, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can pull off. Um, so let's see here. Uh, you know, Zest, this guy was so hot mm. amongst the Protoss both, players, both literally. And Gameplay Physically, well. yes, he's a very he's a very good looking guy, but I mean his play style is well really good. Deer, uh, this guy, Royal Rotor at GSL. Mm. Uh, I mean, a lot of people forget that because he had the time during his uh, time on a uh, mass sports, I believe, where he kind of dropped off the map. But with uh, Legacy of the Void, he's kind of came back into the uh, came back into relevance, basically, uh, especially being on a team like Samsung Galaxy, yep. where he has a coach like Stork who knows how Protoss works in this. Uh, in Legacy of Void, and as a result, he's showing results. Yeah, uh, you know, Zest has beaten Deer a lot, but Deer's looking very, very good at Legacy, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take these record, this record here, too seriously. But um, I mean, honestly, you, you voted for Deer as well, yes. right? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay being wrong, but I got a strong feeling that Deer can pull this off. I mean. Uh, as we mentioned before, uh, Zest's results in Lake Steve the Void have not been impressive, and I love the mask here from Oh here. my gosh, we got a ninja. We have ninjas over here. Are we going to see some Dark Templars tonight from Deer? That's right, it's Deer in his Dark Templar outfit. Don't worry, we have our Spo observers over here, so he will be visible from the booth. Uh, oh, wow, oh actually, my god, all of us actually think we are so somewhere. good, or we're so bad, <laughs> depending on how this turns out. Yeah. Um, in case you guys are wondering, there's uh, two reasons why you'll see uh, that in Korea. Sometimes when people are feeling a little bit sick, as a courtesy, they will wear a mask. Um, and then, of course, sometimes when it's just really cold outside, it I helps see people wear. Your face up. Yeah, it helps heat your face up. Um, it could be either of those two. Anyways, we're going to go into our next game here at Pro League 2016. In the upper right, in the red, Zest. In the bottom left, in the blue, Deer. Who is he? He's got a mask on, I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> anyway. It's the mystery player. Oh dear. That's what, that, that's one day you're gonna, you're, there's gonna be a day, GTR, where you know, I might, I'm gonna be like, oh, I can't come in, but then you see this mysterious pro gamer in a booth, and I've got like a Phantom of the Opera mask on, and I'm slowly going through the tournament winning it when I'm not casting it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's Tasteless, wow. But why is Tasteless wearing a Phantom of the Opera mask in that booth? Ugh, it's like. When I do the interview, I'm like, I will show great games to my fans. Ooh, the mystery player. <laughs> As we see here, both players going for both the gateway and the early gas, uh, no surprises. Um, I have a feeling that because of how this map is uh, designed, 
we'll see the early ne uh, nexuses from both players as uh, Zest going for that nexus. Also, Diff going for that nexus as well. So, no yeah, and, and this is this is all a par for the course on a map like this. Like, um, you know, we'll we'll see what exactly they want to do in a little bit here. The cores are going to start. You know, Protoss is in PvP, especially in StarCraft 2, unlike Brood War, was always a matchup where you really do have a lot of different ways you can play. Uh, recently, we've seen uh, a lot of adept based armies uh, fighting each other. Before that, it was like uh, a lot of Immortals, a lot of Disruptors. Uh, concerning the early game nerfs with uh, the Mothership Core not able to put down those uh, pylon overcharges, we're not going to see those shenanigans with those offensive pylons that we saw last week between Hero and Hurricane. Yeah, no, no, that would yeah. not, not be a doable thing anymore, I would think. Well, it was, it's still viable, it's just that it's not as effective as it was before the patch. Yeah. Um, Stalker starting now here for Deer. That's... And we have an Adept for Zest, so the two builds oh. diverging. Pause PP. game, PP. Does uh, Zest need to PP? We'll have to see uh, what's happening Nice right one, GTR, man. <laughs> Um, so there's some issue. Uh, we'll let you guys know if we get notified what's going on. We occasionally have uh, these problems. Uh, if you would like to talk about the vehicle of eSports, which is technology, go ahead. No, I don't want to talk about that. I've been doing this for too long. Everybody's heard that one. I no longer have to explain that these things run on computers, guys. There's, there's, enough, uh, there's enough people in eSports Oh, so there's a now. setup, hotkey setup problem. So I believe that uh, Zess will be penalized one point as a result of that. As uh, Deer looking quite pansy. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys know if he in fact is. We, we don't know for sure. It depends um, on, on other varying circumstances. We have a lot of support here for Deer in the audience, by the way. Some people cheering. Hello, um, everyone out there. Yes, hello, guys. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, we should get this fixed in a little bit here. He might, he might have to go change his hockey setup. I mean, obviously, you can't play without your hockeys uh, where they need to be. Uh, in this game, so far, we see that one player going for a Stalker. Doesn't mean he's going to be going for Stalkers, but we see at least one being made. The other player going for the Adept. The Adept, as you were saying, has been changed. Um, it has been patched, so it, functionally it might have a different role. Maybe the role that Blizzard more intended it to have. I know that when I was first started playing in Legacy, I was not using the Adept the way I apparently should have been using it, that everybody else was. I, I was using it as like a small harass unit or using it like later on in mid-game or late-game. Um, kind of like we'd see people go for DTs, and then when I started casting and seeing it, what everybody else is doing, I'm like, oh, okay. They, they solve the Adept. They solve that. You just make about 12 of them uh, in some cases. But yeah, let's see what kind of role this unit's going to have here. I, it still has a lot it's, of utility early yeah, on. Yeah, it still has its utility. Uh, the shade ability, very useful. Uh, it's great as a scout. Um, as I can see right now, Deer uh, is opting for that Stalker because that Stalker has a lot more bulk to it. It can yeah. deflect those early units like the Zealots and the Depths out. And uh, something also interesting to note uh, before we uh, switch to, uh, before Zest pause, is that he walled himself uh, off from that uh, bottom ground. So I'm not sure if he walled himself out or there's like that one hex available for him uh, to come just out. Just looking at that, I, th I think he's actually walled himself yes. out. We've seen some players uh, go for Mass Phoenix. I'm not sure if we're going to have that this time around. And I believe we're going to get this game unpaused in a second. So um, both players but, confirming that they are ready. And it uh, looks like we're going to count down into the game. And uh, in a few seconds, we'll be back to our game between Dia and Zest. All right. So uh, back into the game, we can resume the action. Wow, he's Council. actually going for, Zest is going for a Twilight Council right now. Yeah, so it looks like uh, he wants to do some blink play. Um, uh, judging by how he's walled off uh, his base. Uh, I don't see any reason, other option he could do with that Twilight Council. Maybe DTs and an offensive warp in, but we just have to see how this goes uh, after this Twilight Council goes down as uh, we see a robotics facility. Safe move from Deal. All right, Robo Bay is the way to go right now for Deer. Um, you know, with some of these fast expanding builds we've seen. Okay, by the way, Blink, Blink coming here for Zest. This is pretty cool. Uh, he's going to use his Adept, and he's uh, got his, I believe it's walled in there. Uh, we'll get a shot of that later. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to use his Adept to, to keep peeking into uh, Deer's base. And notice he's going around the edges here. Oh, this is cool. I love this. 
But I don't think this scout's gonna net him that much re information. You oh, see I, that there's a gateway and a oh, robotics facility. No, that, that's great though. That's something right there, man. Yeah, uh, he I, knows. I, 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 ooh, nice uh, move there with the depth as well, actually getting to that back. Doesn't really do that much damage, but actually forces uh, DL to uh, char charge those uh, probes against the depth. So uh, it looks like even though he's gathered that robotics facility, he is still going ahead with his blink play. And uh, we'll see how DL reacts to this because. He's got that robotics facility up, he's getting uh, that observer to see what's happening because that base of Zest is walled off. Um, we'll see how quickly he gets those immortals out to counteract with his blink play though. Well, you know, you gotta remember, um, since Zest is, uh, or, or Deer rather, is kind of in the dark, uh, he's having to get observers right now, right? He doesn't know about the threat of, you know, possibly DTs or anything else like that. I mean, when you, when you, uh, you know, cut yourself off from having any real circulation in and out of your base. There's, you can go for all sorts of stuff. It's much tougher for them to rush up there. As and, see, yeah, go ahead. Um, Zest killing off this pylon. Uh, doesn't feel that that blink play, uh, I assume he wanted to do some sort of two-base blink timing. Uh, wasn't going to work out with that robotics facility up, so it looks like he's intending to take his third base. But, oh, oh like this is so good. And he oh. gets it. Nice job there. Also remember that there's a dark shrine being built, so if uh, yeah, he's building Immortals now because he knows there's that threat of Stalkers with Blink on the map for Zest. If he keeps swapping those Immortals out and he, um, Zest gets a Dark Temple warp in, he can do a lot of damage for that. Uh, this is a really, I mean, this build really makes me think a lot. I, I really like how, uh, how Zest is approaching this, right? He's expanding. He's got some Blink Stalkers. You don't know how many exactly, right? That Observer never actually got in there. Um, he has DTs on the way, but you don't know if you need more Immortals for the Blink star. I mean, there's so much that can happen here, and we have that Observer coming down here now! This is oh huge! No! That Observer goes down as well, so... And he can just uh, Blink out here. Yep. Peace! So, okay, so he uh, Deer stopped at two Immortals because he needs these Observers out. Uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know about the Dark Shrine that has been built by Zest, but he knows that if Zest is going after those observers, there has to be something going on here. This is really cool here uh, by Zest. I really like this. And he's keeping the pressure on here. He's hoping he might be able to bait out a few more immortals. Uh, however, even with one observer out, it's going to be a lot tougher. <coughs> Excuse me, cop. It's going to be a lot tougher for him uh, to, to defend two mains here. And even with the observer that he has, Ooh, there's this. a chance that Zest could come in here and try to kill off this observer. Yeah, oh, but, my God. Uh, see how much damage these Dark Temples do. I, I felt, though, that he might have oh, might be better man. just to drop one at the expansion as well. But well, even these three DTs are doing a lot of damage. And that's going to unpower that uh, upgrade there on the uh, council or whatever that was. And he's actually going to look at the forge here. No, this is fantastic. Note, he's actually keeping his observer right over that army. He wants to see if he can't blink on top of the other observer. And of course, with most of this army actually defending uh, the stalkers over here at the entrance already. Zest is mining from his other expansion. I mean, Zest is tactically playing like a genius. This has been vintage Zest that we've seen so far in this game. He's been able to out multitask his opponent. And not only that, he's been able to outsmart his opponent and get those minor gains like those Observer Snipes to get the advantage here and in a fickle matchup like Protoss versus Protoss, uh, mirror matchups where it's so close, uh, Zest is slowly gaining the lead uh, as time progresses. Okay, uh, more gates coming down now as Zest is ahead in production, ahead economically. We actually see the uh, supplies actually evening up right now, but yeah, Zest. but as far as tech goes, man, yeah, this guy's sure. in great shape. I mean, sure. you got you got the uh, attack upgrade coming here, where his deers are making his forge. We're about to have disruptors, yep, yeah, disruptors. coming out. As a uh, um, deer, rather killing those rocks at the back. Uh, we'll see how deer tries to get back into this game. I haven't really seen anything from him that uh, tracks for me. So him trying to climb back into the game. Well, I gotta say, I mean, the, the build from Zest. I can't really blame Deer for the position he got into because of this, you yeah. know? I, I mean, Deer has, has actually been on his back foot for most of the game. He's, he's definitely having a, a, a tougher time trying to read what's coming at him. And Zest has this irregular rhythm in the text that he's doing. He's getting a couple stalkers with Blink, and the, and the strategy is not to actually do a Blink all-in or to out-micro his opponents. It's just to get rid of observers while he does a DT drop while then expanding safely, I mean, it's pretty cool. Speaking of which, uh, Deer taking that 6 o'clock base, Zest counteracting with his own uh, 
12 o'clock base as well. So it looks like both these players are posturing for the long term game. The disruptors are now coming out here. And he's going to be careful. That was move command. The disruptors are coming out. Nice job there. Going to continue to push this forward. Gets that shot off on the uh, Immortal. One Immortal does go oh, down for man. DR. DT has... is going to be dropped into the back, bottom left. So uh, Blink Stalk is here. Uh, just chip in away the base of Zest. We'll see how Zest deals with this. Uh, one Dark Templar and one Zealot. I really love that move, actually, because uh, if you had an Observer with that army, uh, they're actually uh, going on to this big battle here. One Immortal does go down from these uh, Blink Stalkers. And nice uh, disruption shot as well. Another drop at the expansion of the back base of DR. That DTs are going to do a lot of damage here. As they observe, uh, disrupt the oh shot. Doing God. so much damage as well. And oh, yeah, he's just got such good control, and he's actually shoved him back far enough. You know, Immortal's not the most nimble unit against the disruptor. Uh, he's just targeting down that nexus. Uh, I don't believe the DTs are doing any more damage down there in that bottom left main, but over here it's uh, four base versus now three base. This uh, disruptor actually goes up. Oh, and gets the one of the uh, disruptors. I could have done a lot more damage if Deer was not careful there. Um, I really love disruptors. They're really great at zoning uh, your opponent, especially in situations like this where you have those large stalker blink based armies. He's trying to get this one disruptor over here. He's got to be careful not to overextend. Great control there by Zest. Man, these guys, so good. Deer right now, though, in a bit of a tough spot. Having to play from behind here yeah, uh, is going to be very frustrating. Losing that 6 o'clock base as well. So Zest is going to have that slight economic lead as well once he gets those probes maybe added to that 12 o'clock base. So um, there might be a winner of opportunity where Zest just uh, maxes out before Deer does and then he can just attack move into Deer's uh, army before Deer can max out himself. Okay, we have the Stalkers coming up here to wipe out the remaining uh, Stalkers of Deer and there's actually not really anywhere they can blink from here the distance between the two expansions uh, in the upper left too far to actually blink into. But seeing the fact that Zest got baited by that small stalker army at the top left, uh, do you see a window opportunity to move out across the map and we'll see how much damage this uh, army does. Uh, nice job there. Disruptors here from Zest definitely with the winning engagements. Ooh. That was a really risky move for there from Zest but uh, he's not playing the game quite enough he knows that. He could have just moved forward there without taking uh, now, that hit from the Zest old. isn't maxed out, so he can still warp in units to defend these stalkers harassing. Uh, but not a bad idea for Deer to try to hit it this time. If um, he wasn't, if he was maxed out, this army might have to turn around. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh does, does kick off this disruptor. No, he doesn't. Oh, no! Oh, the misplays! Oh, that was some really sloppy play there from Deer, losing a bunch of stalkers there. Oh. And actually counterattack here at the front base of oh, Zest. Oh my god, he needs to blink on top of that. Gets the ult out. Oh! Good there exchange. The orb of the disruptor. And if those disruptors died there, those stalkers could have done way more damage than they should have. Yeah, I think there's so much going on at once right now all over the, uh, the mini map. We might have another engagement too. Gears over here in the bottom right, and Zest is moving to occupy this territory. As we see here, Zest just picking off these stray stalkers off the uh, And so uh, we got. And maybe around a 15 supply lead for Zest. There's a oh, more disruptor shots. Boom! Four stalkers go down. Disruptor's doing a lot of damage. And these money shots. Oh, that was really close. That was Zest. super close. Had he not blinked there, that could have been a. Uh, these money shots from the disruptors of uh, Deer keeping him into this game. All right, he's coming down now. Uh, he's going to go and try to get this. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, huge miscontrol there. And now he's going to go over here. Oh, that's so lucky. And he oh, actually what? intercepts He blinks away stalkers. and happens to be on top of the remaining stalkers coming here to reinforce. This is just basically who's going to get the better disruptor shot think... out. Oh, my God. God. This is a bloodbath. Uh, I actually, you know, Zess has lost so much. I think Deer might have just out-controlled him. Unreal. I mean, this really goes to show you the ability to come back with the disruptor in the game. Absolutely beautiful. I, I am at a loss for words of like Zest control in that battle. Like a lot of uh, unnecessary losses there. And oh my god, that's some six splits there from Deer with those stalkers without the blink. As oh my god, he's just blinking forward. These oh! disruptors. Oh! Is that going to be enough though? Deer's still pushing forward. He's going to try to come in here and end it. A lot of disruptors coming up here. This is his chance. As we see these orbs not doing the damage that they should, but there's well, way too many disruptors for D and GG. There GG. it is, GG. 
Deere did it. He was behind for about 90% of that game, but with good control, good dodges, good engagements, he managed to turn it around, really showing uh, you know what an awesome matchup PvP can be, especially in the late game. Even losing that fourth base, even though Zest outplayed Deer in that early game, the way that Deer used those disruptors changed the flow of the game. Zest had no answer to how uh, Deer engaged those battles using those disruptors orbs. They did a lot of damage, and that's why Deer won the game. Deer is the ninja Protoss. So fantastic! Wow. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to go into game number four. That's all we can do. Yeah, so game number four will be Stats Against Reality on Ruins of Ceres, and uh, I picked Stats for this game. I believe you picked Reality. Yeah, I was feeling Reality here, but I could be dead wrong. So, I mean, let's, let's see what happens. Um, yeah, that game man, was, that a was really, a really, really good amazing. game. I mean, those Disruptors were just flawless from here. Oh, uh, I haven't seen Disruptor used so well just like that, so... Well, it goes to show you, I mean, two Disruptor hits used correctly. And, I mean, Stalkers, it's kind of funny, it's like... Disruptors are the counter to Stalkers, but Stalkers are the counter to Disruptors, so you it, know? It's basically like uh, finding out when the timing is when your opponents use up the Blink, right? And then you see that window of opportunity to go in when they don't have Blink. And uh, if they're not careful enough moving their stalkers back, then your disruptors can do a lot of damage. So I tell you, man, uh, Zess is not going to be happy about that game. And uh, we uh, it's, it's going to be a tough, tough moment for him, man. I mean, <laughs> he was ahead that entire game. Yeah. I thought his build was better. I thought he was pushing deer uh, in the direction he wanted that game to go. I, I feel once those DTs came out and did all that damage for Zess, I felt that he had of the game, um, but I guess he didn't really push that advantage with those DTs further and allowed Deer to get that disrupt technology, get that fourth base up, and once that happened, um, Deer was able to climb back into the game. 